Here for you people, there's carnival insinuations. He's always trying to rose me. If it's not a song, it's a whistle. If it's not a whistle, it's a cough. But you can taunt and taunt, and I'm laughing too. <laughs> Dear heart to me country, in darkness I found thee. The dark chain of silence had hung o'er thee long. Jesus, do you hear that? Should have sought for the devil sought son of provocation. When proudly me, own island, half I unbound thee, and gave all thy cords to life, freedom, and song. But I get a life, go for life, go for life, go for you! Cuckoo! Oh, Turn me back with the two of you, they're at it like a pair of fighting cocks. Uncle Peter, Uncle Peter, Uncle Peter! Uncle Peter, Uncle Peter, be damned! Do you think I'd like to give a free pass to the young Cody to join me whole life into the holy manual of penances and martyrdoms? If you won't exercise some sort of control over that Uncle Peter of yours, there'll be a funeral, and it won't be me that'll be in the hearse. Are the two of you always going to be tearing down the little bit of respectability your bodies try to build up? Am I always going to have to nurse the two of you into the hardy habit of trying to keep up a little bit of appearance? Why weren't you here to see the way he run at me with the sword? What did you call me, little Miskadol Swiper? The two of you don't make a generous alterations in your goings on and try to inaugurate the customs of the rest of the house. Yes, can flit into other lodgings where your bowsy backing will meet me with an encore. Would you like to be called a little risk with all swine? If you attempt to wag that sword of yours at anybody again, it has to be taken away from you or put into a safe place away from babies who don't know the danger of them things. Well, I'm not letting anybody call me a little risk with all swine. Open and shut them now with a well mannered motion, like the door of a select bar in a high class pub. <laughs> and once and for all, Willie, you'll have to try to deliver yourself. From the desire of provoking old Peter, it's our wild forgetfulness of what's allowable and proper in a respectable home. Well, let him mind his own business then. Yesterday I caught him he he and out of him, and reading bits out of Janerski's thesis on the origin, development, and consolidation of the evolutionary idea of the proletariat. No, let it end at that, for God's sake. Jack will be in any minute, and I'll laugh at the point of the evening, tossed about in the never asked uproar between you and Uncle Peter. Well, did you manage to settle the lock yet, Mr. Good? It's almost better than new one now, Mrs. Kitterow. It's almost ready to open and shut of its own accord. You're all horn man, Fluter. How many points is that, Kitterow? Near one at all, Mrs. Kitterow. For fluters and the water wagon now. You could stand where you're standing, Tenton. Fluter, have a glass of mud. Have a glass of mud, Fluter. Till the bells be ringing the old year out. And the new year in. But you have as much a chance of moving Fluter as a tune and tin whistle would move a deaf man. And he did. Cutting a new lock on a door. Afraid that the poor neighbours are breaking and steal. Maybe now they're a damn sight more honest than your ladyship. Checking the children playing on the stairs. And getting on the nerves of your ladyship. Complaining about Bessie Burgess singing her hymns at night when she's had a few up. Bessie Burgess will sing her hymns wherever she damn well likes. You little overdressed trollop, you for one pin I'd paste the white face over you. Luther! Luther! No, Bessie, Bessie, don't leave poor Mrs. Kitter alone. She does no one any harm, and minds no one's business but her own. Why is she always trying to speak proud things, looking like the mighty one in the congregation of the people? What's up? What's after happening? Nothing, Jack, nothing. It is all over now. Come on, Bessie, come on. What's wrong, Nora? Did she say anything to you? She was bargained out for, and I told her to go up or that to her own place. And before I knew where she was, she slew at me like a tiger and tried to guzzle me. Get up to your own place, Mrs. Burgess, and don't you be interfering with my wife. I'll be the worst for you. Go on, go on. Mind who you're pushing now. I attend my place of worship anyhow. Not like some of them who attend neither church, chapel, nor meeting house. If my son were home from the trenches, he'd see me right it. There, there. Don't mind that old bitch, Nora. I'll soon put a stop to her and her fear. Someday, when I'm here by myself, she'll come down and do something desperate. Oh, Sarah, fear of her doing anything desperate? I'll talk to her tomorrow when she's sober. I taste my mind that is shocking to the sensibility of behaving herself. Willie, is that the place for your dungarees? Ah, they won't do the floor any harm, will they? <coughs> Uncle Peter! Uncle Peter, tea is ready!
It's sure to be a great meeting tonight. We are to go on, all right. I won't go, Jack. You can go if you wish. Do you want the sugar, Uncle Peter? Do you want to start your picking at me again? Now, Uncle Peter, you mustn't be so touchy. Sugar is only asked if you wanted the sugar. He doesn't care a damn for the sugar, no. He's only trying to twat me. Can't you let him alone? If he wants the sugar, let him stretch his hand out and get it himself. No, if you want the sugar, you can stretch out your own hand and get it for yourself. Tonight is the first chance Brynn has shown himself off since they made a captain of him. Shouldn't it be a treat to see him swanking it at the head of the citizen army, turning the flag of the thumb the stars. He was sweet and you once, Nora. He may have been. I never liked him. Troy always thought he was a bit of a thick. They're bringing nice disgrace on that banner now. How are they bringing disgrace on it? Because it's a Labour flag and was never meant for politics. What does the design of the theme throw bearing on at the stars of the heavenly cloud mean if it's not communism? It's a flag that should only be used when we're building the barricades to fight for a workers' republic. <laughs> what are you fun out here for? Your mind is the mind of a mummy. I'd better go and get a good place to look at Ireland's warriors passing by. Will you brush your clothes before you go? Ah, they'll do well enough. Go on and brush them. The brush is in the drawer there. Oh, where is the slave so lowly, condemned to chains unholy? Who could he burst his bonds at first, would pine beneath them slowly? No, I tell you, my old Kobe, once and for all, that I'll not stick any longer these tittering taunts yours, robbing or robbed to sing your sights in slanders, written in the mind of men, to the thinking and saying things that'll sick in his soul and sin. You got it? No, 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 isn't that the malignant old varmint looking like the illegitimate son of an illegitimate child of a corporal in the Mexican army? He's after leaving me now in such a state of agitation that I want to do myself justice when I'm marching to the meeting. Here, buckle your sword and go to your meeting so that we'll have at least one hour piece. For God's sake, hurry him up all this now. You are going to try to start to twat me now. Shh, now your hat's on. Your house is touched. Off you pop. No, there you go then. Go on, go on. A penny for him, Jack. Me? I was thinking of nothing. You were thinking of the meeting. When we were courting and I wanted you to go, you'd say, I'd say, hey, with me. And that you felt lonely and cheer and crowd when I was absent. But wasn't that we were once married when you couldn't keep away from him? Ah, that's enough about the meeting now. It looks as if you wanted me to go the way you were talking. You were always at me to give up the, the citizen army, and I gave it up. Surely that had to satisfy you. Aye, you got the salt when they didn't make a captain out of you. It wasn't for my sake, Jack. For your sake or no, you're benefiting by it, aren't you? And I didn't forget your birthday, did I? And you liked your new hat, didn't you? Didn't you? Jack! Jack, please, Jack! I thought you were tired of that sort of thing long ago. Well, you're finding out now that I am in third grade yet, anyhow. Mrs. Clitheroe doesn't like to be kissed, for she doesn't. It's a little red lip Nora. Oh, yes. Your little, little red lip Nora is a sweet little girl when the fifth sees is you. But your little, little red lip Nora has to clean her boots every morning all the same. Oh, well, you forgot to be snotty. It's looking like as if it was you that was going to be snotty. Bribing up with bitterness the minute her body attempts to open her mouth. Is it any wonder? Turn a tender saying it will mean in a malice and spite. It's hard for a body always to be keeping her mind bent and making thoughts that are no longer the strength of your own satisfaction. Well, if we're going to dribble the time away here sitting like a pair of cranky mummies, I'd be as well sewing or doing something useful about the place. And Jack, don't be so cross. Cross? I'm not cross. I'm not a bit cross. It was yourself that started it. You take a body up too quickly, Jack. I didn't mean to say anything out of the way. How quiet the house is now. They must be all out. I suppose so. Jack? I'm longing to show you my new hat. To see what you think of it. Would you like to see it? I do not Well, 
How does Mr. Fitzroy like me new hat? It suits you, Nora. It does right now. Well, sit down now, and don't let me hear another crossword over me for the rest of the night. Jack. Well? You haven't sung any songs since our honeymoon. Sing me one now. Oh, please, Jack. What song? Since Maggie went away? No, not that. It's too sad. When you said you loved me. <clears throat> The violets are scenting the woods, Nora displaying their charm to the bee. When I first said I loved only you, Nora, and you said you loved only me. The chestnut blooms gleam. You know. Don't mind him. Don't mind him, Jack. They'll go away in a minute. Come in, Clithro. Come in, Clithro. Are you there? A message from General Jim Connolly. Then it's Captain Brennan. Take no notice. Take no notice. Let's pretend we're not in. Let us forget everything tonight but our two selves. Don't be alarmed, Darren. I'll just go and see what he wants and send him about his business. Please, Jack. Please don't open it for your own little Nora's sake. No, don't be silly, Norman. A dispatch from General Connolly. Commandant Clitheroe is to take command of the 8th Battalion of the Irish Citizen Army, which will assemble to proceed to the meeting at 9 o'clock. He is to see that all units are provided with full equipment, two days rations and 50 rounds of ammunition. At 2 o'clock a.m. the Army will leave Liberty Hall for a reconnaissance attack on Dublin Castle. Commandant General Connolly. I don't understand this. Why does General Connolly call me Commandant? The staff appoint you Commandant, and the General agreed with their selection. When did this happen? A fortnight ago. What was the word was never sent to me? Word was sent to you. I myself brought it. Who did you give it to then? I think I gave it to Mrs. Clithrow there. Nora, did you hear that? Nora, Captain Brennan says he brought a letter to me from General Connolly, and they gave it to you. Where is it? What did you do with it? Please, Jack, don't go out tonight, and I'll tell you, I'll explain.